Black holes are these incredibly fascinating uh, but mysterious objects. We know they sit at the hearts of galaxies and they drive how those galaxies grow and how those galaxies die. They swallow gas and stars up. They're also these incredibly enigmatic and mysterious objects that live at the boundary between our two great theories of, of physics, general relativity, which describes gravity, and quantum mechanics, which describes the smallest things in the world. We want to make an image of a black hole in order to get uh, the best proof yet of the existence of black holes. What we want to see is a ring of light that surrounds the black hole and shows that all of the mass of the black hole is packed into that very dense space. The Event Horizon Telescope collaboration is this amazing group of fantastic people from all around the world, Americans, Europeans, people from Asia, who've come together with all their technical expertise and scientific expertise to make this image of a ring around the black hole. We've been a formal collaboration for only a few years, but this is the culmination of several decades uh, of work that people have been doing. I've been involved in this for the past 25 years, since I was a student trying to make an image of a black hole, and now we're finally doing it. Our experiments are like an Arctic expedition. We have to plan for months and months and months in advance, gather our equipment, and then we have this great migration of people to observatories all around the world. We stay up all night, uh, we run our telescopes, and then we have this terrible period of waiting where we don't know if it's all worked. We send all of our data together, and only when it's truly combined do we know if it's worked. And then the even harder part begins of analyzing that data and being very, very careful, doing all the checks and balances to know that we got it right. The most challenging part of this is pulling it all together and doing as sophisticated a test as we can to ensure the reliability of what we're doing. We're pulling together data from all these stations, giant volumes of data, combining it together, and we want to make sure that we get everything absolutely right because the result is just so important. The most exciting thing by far uh, has been our first view uh, uh, of the image. I didn't think we would get it. I thought it was just going to be too hard. I knew it was worth it to try, but I didn't think we would get it. And seeing that image for the first time uh, was really eye-opening for me, something that I've wanted to see for over two decades now. That was it. The future of this project is amazing because now that we've seen what we're after, we have so many more questions to ask about it, to push into the regime of can we decide, is Einstein right? Can we study how gas really gets swallowed by the black hole? Can we see a giant eruption uh, of, uh, of radiation, of particles coming out of the system? So many things to do. We've really only just begun. Black holes are um, the most fascinating and most attractive objects in the universe. They are extreme objects. So they are so densely packed that nothing can ex escape. Um, gravity plays such an important role that everything is locked inside a black hole and nothing can escape. So we don't get any information from within this very compact object. So um, this is this is a very peculiar kind of object in the universe and we would like to understand it. We think there are black holes in the universe. There is a lot of indirect evidence that they should exist, but we are not sure what kind of physics rules these black holes inside. So what's the physical nature of these black holes is. And that's the reason we do these kind of observations and we try to figure out what's going on. The Event Horizon Telescope uh, Corporation is a big international project with many scientists uh, from all over this planet who are working on the one goal to get an image of the immediate um, environment surrounding of a black hole. So um, the black hole you can imagine as, as a kind of sphere with an event horizon and the event horizon is the outer boundary of the black hole. This is an area which has never been imaged before. So we want to get an image of the immediate surrounding of the event horizon. We all have different roles in this collaboration. There's a lot of expertise coming together from all the different scientists. So we hope we can combine 
um, successfully our knowledge to understand what's, what's going on in, um, in the surrounding of an event horizon. I'm coming from the imaging part, so um, I work on uh, data, on imaging very long baseline interferometry data. So we zoom into um, the environment of black holes, but not that far so far. So we couldn't uh, go that far as we hope to be able to do now. But uh, we were imaging um, the outer parts, um, the jets, for example, of, of black holes. We are still working on the EHT data. And it's amazing to be able to work on data which have never been obtained before. To have highest resolution observations, uh, this is a unique time for a scientist in his or her life to work on these kind of data. So to work, to see into an area which, where, where we didn't have any information before. We hope to be successful and really get an image of the immediate vicinity of the event horizon. And um, I mean, this will open up so many possibilities to discuss what kind of physics is going on there. And uh, the most exciting thing about this project is the hope that we will be successful, that we really get an image of the immediate vicinity of an event horizon. So that would be unique, we, uh, that would be great. And we would be able to study physics we couldn't do before. The future of the project uh, will hopefully going towards a new understanding of more fundamental questions in physics. If this is true that black holes are the extreme objects where we can study gravity and we know that um, general relativity which describes black holes in the outer part up to the event horizon breaks down at the event horizon. So the big hope is um, that with more data we might be able to study the physics beyond general relativity. So maybe there might be quantum physics ruling beyond the event horizon or the combination of quantum physics and general relativity, which would be the theory of quantum gravity, which is non-existent at the moment, but we might learn more about this with the help of studying black holes. Black holes are literally gravity run amok. They are purely gravitational objects predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity and their most notable and terrifying feature is that things go in and they never come back out. Black holes are places where Einstein's theory of general relativity is the whole story, not merely a perturbation on top of Newton's theory which explains the dynamics of planets in our solar system. As a result, black holes provide a unique environment in which to probe general relativity, specifically in strong gravity generally and its implications across the cosmos. So the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration is a collection of experts across the world who are coming together to create a unique capability, the highest resolution imaging instrument in the history of astronomy for the single purpose of capturing the image of a shadow of a black hole. So I come in close to the end, which I think is a a privileged place to be where after many other people before me have put in the hard work of collecting data and calibrating the data, we interpret the data. We try to determine what exactly does this image, the shape of the shadow, the shape of the emission about the shadow tell us about the fundamental physics of gravity and about how black holes grow and launch outflows which impact the universe around them. So we've been doing this for 15 years now, and at the beginning it was simply extraordinary that some point in the indeterminate future these might actually be relevant. But I have to say it's taken on a new uh, importance now as we actually have images that look like the simulations. So it's extraordinary uh, confluence between theory and experiment, and it promises uh, tremendous breakthroughs on the horizon. The most difficult part and the most exciting parts of uh, scientific projects are often the same. Um, accessing the information inherent in, in the EHT images of M87 and ultimately Sag A star um, is exactly both the challenge and, and the great payoff. The EHT is a transformative experiment that's going to create a sea change in how we understand the, the life and times of black holes, both how they grow and how they impact the universe around them, but also the, their fundamental gravity. And I think the future of the EHT in particular is going to be written both in 
detailed modeling and understanding detailed fluctuations in the image, but also moving from black hole portraiture to black hole cinema. When we take not one image, but hundreds, and we compare how they evolve over time. A black hole is the most mysterious object in the universe. It's when matter gets to be in such a small space, and it's so dense that the force of gravity prevents even light from escaping. That's a one-way door from our universe. And if we can study that, we can answer some of the most fundamental questions that people can ask. If you want to make a test of the fundamental theories of the universe, you want to go to the most extreme laboratories in the universe. And a black hole is that. The Event Horizon Telescope is our chance as humans to take the first picture of a black hole. The most difficult part of the Event Horizon Telescope for me has been building the whole team, bringing everyone together. When we first started this work, we were just a handful of people making measurements of the size of these black holes. And since then, we've grown from a few people to over 200. And now we're ready to make the first image of a black hole. And that has been a big period of growth. You know, we started just by measuring the size of black holes with a few telescopes. And I remember seeing those first results come across my computer screen, and that was when I got hooked. That was when I knew that something really extraordinary was possible. As the director, I do many things. I go to telescopes and I do observations, but I also enjoy the analysis, and I also enjoy the imaging. Um, so I do many, many things. I wear many hats in the collaboration. The future of this project is amazing. Right? We have done something extraordinary. We've made the first picture of a black hole, but now we want to do even more. Now we want to make the first movie. Now we want to understand how space-time rotates around the black hole. We'll do that by putting more telescopes around the world to make our virtual lens even better. One of the most uplifting things for me is the team that we've built and the fact that we're doing something that people have told us was impossible. And when you, at the end of the day, do something that people tell you you can't do, it's an incredible feeling. And I think the whole team is very, very proud that we've accomplished something like this. It's not just for us, it's for everyone. Black holes a huge amount of mass in a small area, which distorts space and time, such that you know, everything that goes too close, light and every information disappears forever in that hole, never gets out. And that even time slows down and comes to a standstill at the edge of a black hole. That's one of the weirdest and most exotic objects we can imagine. We have never seen a black hole. So far, black holes is a theory. We've seen how it actually seems to do things. We've seen black holes merge. We've heard uh, the gravitational waves from the merging of what we think are black holes, but we've never seen a black hole. We've never seen the actual object. Seeing a black hole actually allows us to not only know they exist, and not only know an event horizon exists, it also allows us to test some of the very basic predictions of the theory of general relativity of Albert Einstein, which really describes space and time uh, in its completeness. And that has never been tested before. The Event Horizon Telescope collaboration is a collaboration of scientists around the world from many different countries, continents, and institutions to make a telescope the size of the Earth, giving us the highest resolution there is that currently is achievable with telescopes of any kind. I'm chairing the Science Council of the scientists giving advice of the scientific direction of the project. And I'm leading a group in Nijmegen to actually help with all the work from the instrumentation to the actual analysis of the data. One thing I really enjoy the most is when there's an observing campaign and we can actually go to the telescopes. And I can go to the telescope myself and sit there and see and and participate in when the data is being taken. Then it's like going to a, like to a monastery on the mountains, you know, for a week, you just focus on one thing. And, uh, and that is really a very, very pleasant and, and exciting experience. You know, I remember the first moment when we saw the first image, you know, it was, you know, they had made the first image and we were actually looking at it, interpreting it together. And just that moment when you see that image for the first time, and the data comes, and the ground truth comes. That's just awesome. The most difficult part of a collaboration is a collaboration, is a people. You have so many different types of people with 
many different ways of thinking and working and bringing that together and making sure everybody gets credit, everybody gets heard, and that's a very difficult thing if you don't have clear structures. And we just have structures that are evolving. We're a young collaboration, so many things are still unclear or have to be settled. And you know, once you have everything set up, then you can just do your work. But now we have to do everything as we go, develop the structure, develop the way we work with each other. Um, and yeah, you know, if you're on your own, yeah, you know what, to ha what you have to do. But if you have 100 people telling everybody else what to do, you know, you have to deal with this. I think we've been extremely lucky. I'd expected that we have to work for years and years, do many observations until we get a final image. And then we look at our first source and we see that ring. We see the event horizon and we see that shadow, that dark region. And you know immediately we are looking at an event horizon and a black hole from all sides at once in this, this thing. We see at a region where time stops. This is a very different part of the universe that we're seeing for the very first time. I think the most exciting result of our collaboration is that image. That's something nobody has ever seen before. Of course, you still need to understand what you're actually seeing. You, know, you need to believe what you see. So it's a long process until you really convince yourself what we see there is physically really proof of an event horizon. But that's part of an exciting journey. I think we've just made the first step. There's so many things still to do. We need better images, probably more telescopes, and eventually we may have to go into space. Then we can make razor sharp images of black holes and test all the theories in great, great detail. Man muss ein unglaublich scharfes Teleskop bauen, das in der Lage ist, ein Senfkorn in New York von Europa aus zu sehen. Und das macht man, indem man Teleskop auf der ganzen Welt zusammenschaltet und bei den höchsten Radiofrequenzen beobachten lässt. Und dann kann man so etwas sehen wie, das Schatten, wie den Schatten eines schwarzen Lochs. Und das haben wir jetzt zum ersten Mal geschafft. Das ist eine globale, weltweite Zusammenarbeit von Wissenschaftlern, aber dank der Europäischen Union konnten wir hier Finanzierung haben, die uns wirklich ganz nach vorne gebracht hat und das Experiment 2017 erst möglich gemacht hat. Und äh, das war ein ganz wichtiger Durchbruch für uns. Es hat 20 Jahre gedauert, erst die Idee zu haben, dann die Technik zu entwickeln. Die ersten Beobachtungen wurden hier in Europa von deutschen Wissenschaftlern gemacht. Und dann die ganze Welt zusammenzubringen und dann so viele Daten zusammenzuführen und aufzeichnen zu können. Die Technik ist erst jetzt in den letzten Jahren da gewesen, aufgrund der digitalen Entwicklung. Was ihr nodig habt, ist ein Teleskop, die in Staat ist, ein Mosterdzaadje in New York, von heute Nederland, zu können sehen. Und um dit Teleskop zu bauen, muss ihr Radioteleskop auf der ganzen Welt zusammen schrakeln, die bei der höchsten Radiofrequenz wirken. Die geben uns Abschläge miteinander, äh, mit elkaar zusammenbringen. Und dann kann ihr so ein Plaatje machen. Die Idee ist al 20 Jahre geleden geformuleerd, maar je hebt al die telescopen nodig, je moet internationaal samenwerken en je hebt digitale elektronica nodig die heel veel gegevens tegelijkertijd opslaat. En dat is pas nu gelukt. Het is een wereldwijde samenwerking waar de Europeanen een belangrijke rol hebben in gespeeld. En dit is dankzij de Europese Unie, we hadden eigenlijk zonder de EU eh, niet zo'n grote impact kunnen maken. En die waarnemingen in 2017 zijn eigenlijk Dankzij de Europese Unie gelukt. So for this experiment, it was clear that we need expertise from completely different areas. And so we needed someone with imaging capabilities, we needed someone with numerical relativity capabilities, and in my case, we needed someone who can try to find this additional information via pulsars. And so just being part of this team means you work completely differently. I mean, first of all, it's great to see all these young people being excited of being a big, great team working together. And then, of course, um, it's, it just, there are some expectations around the world. Everyone sort of looks at us and wants to see that image. And so do we. And um, of course, we are embedded in this global collaboration as well. And so with us as, as this big team, sort of representing the European team, it's, it's, um, it's part of this global game. Um, we have colleagues around the world who have the same goal, but it puts us on the landscape and uh, 
really enables the project actually to be possible. And, and so Europe and the ESC plays this important role there. The Synergy grant means more than just adding money. The Synergy grant is not about um, having teams in, at three different places and they collaborate. It's really, as the word suggests, a synergy. We really need to understand very deeply on a sort of almost day-to-day -day basis what the other people are doing in order to make progress in our own area. So it's where things really come together and the uh, Synergy Grant enables you to have this interaction in such an intensive way. You wouldn't do this with the collaboration because you are sort of bound by your day-to-day business and again you wouldn't look left you wouldn't look right but with the synergy grant we have this great team you always know someone somewhere at the end of a, of a computer line at the end of an email who knows exactly the answer to your question and so and if you don't know the answer then we look work together to find it out and so it's that um, shared dream is this this shared ambition which brings us together so far no one has actually ever seen a black hole and so we were able for the first time to actually take an image of a black hole and make it visible to everyone. Black hole are prediction of theories of gravity that should absorb everything, including light. And that by definition makes it then difficult to make them visible to us. And yet with that experiment where we look at the center of the galaxies, there we see the black hole as a shadow. And so for the first time you can actually see it. So if you try to look into the center of galaxies, it's usually blocked from view by dust and other stuff. In the radio, you can look through, like here today, we can look through rain, you can look through clouds, and so we can look through dust. And with combining radio telescopes like this together with other telescopes in the world, you can peer right into the center of the galaxy and see this black hole. Yes, I mean, there are some experiments like this, which a person can dream of but will never be able to pull off by him or herself. And so we come together to form this team and we got the resources from the European Research Council. Without it, it wouldn't have been impossible. And so by putting the team together, by putting the resources together and working worldwide with our collaborators, this has become possible. It's a really global endeavor at the heart of Europe. Jeder in der Welt hat vielleicht schon mal von schwarzen Löchern gehört. Aber noch niemand hat ein schwarzes Loch gesehen und wir waren zum ersten Mal in der Lage, ein schwarzes Loch sichtbar zu machen, für jeden als sichtbares Bild. Schwarze Löcher sind zwar laut Einstein sehr einfache Objekte, aber man konnte das bisher noch nie verifizieren. Jetzt sind wir zum ersten Mal in der Lage, so ein schwarzes Loch in allen seinen Eizeiten sich anzuschauen und damit auch zu schauen, ob die Vorstellung, wie Gravitation funktioniert, auch stimmt. Wenn man in das Zentrum von Galaxien reinschaut, hat man normalerweise Staub davor. Und im Optischen kann man also deshalb nicht da reinschauen. Hier im Radio sieht man auch heute, können wir durch Staub, durch Regen, durch äh, Wolken hindurchschauen. Und so können wir das Zusammenschalten von Teleskopen auf der ganzen Welt ein hoch aufgelöstes Bild vom Zentrum einer solchen Galaxie sichtbar machen und damit auch das schwarze Loch. Wenn man eine solche Idee hat, kann man vielleicht alleine davon träumen. Aber man braucht ein Team, man braucht das, die Finanzierung, man braucht die Instrumente und man braucht die richtigen Menschen zusammen. Und hier sind wir zusammengekommen, um dieses Experiment durchzuführen und haben dazu die Hilfe auch vom ERC Council bekommen. Und das hat uns ge geholfen, global mit den Leuten zusammenzuarbeiten, im Herzen von Europa sozusagen das Projekt anzuführen. From the astronomy side, it's basically something that light doesn't escape and really just, I would say, a very heavy thing that controls the dynamics. But from the physics side, I find that more an interesting question, that this is basically some kind of rent or tear maybe in space time and a place where we don't understand the physics and have a lot of serious questions about information theory. It's an international collaboration of scientists, both observers and theorists, who've come together to uh, answer this question of, can we see black holes and what are black holes? So I do two things in the collaboration. I'm um, a member of the Science Council, and we're basically the highest scientific advisory board uh, for the collaboration. And then I'm one of the conveners of the multi-wavelength working group. And what that means is that we try to gather complementary information simultaneously with the EHT observations from radio to even gamma rays and hopefully even particles. My role has been to gather this uh, simultaneous data from other wavelengths, but mostly I've been involved in trying to think about the modeling uh, and making simulations and, and models of, of the light that could be coming out of a black hole. I think 
for me personally, this is something a lot of us have been working on for a long time, so the day-to-day -day work wasn't the really exciting thing. The really exciting thing for me was uh, being able to finally test something that we've all been thinking about and working on, at least for me personally, 20, 25 years. I think the most difficult part is really the coordination of such a large group of people, so many different facilities, the fact that we had to request time on different facilities and get everything to come together uh, on a strict timeline. I think there's a really exciting future beyond you know, the first time of imaging a black hole. It's actually understanding the physics of black holes and what they do in the universe and how they excite particles and jets and affect their environments. And so there's going to be a lot of work in the future. We all understand from a mathematical point of view that black holes exist. But to actually see something is a very visceral experience and I think important for science and also for us to believe in it. I think it's important to image the black hole because it, it moves us beyond just these theoretical ideas that we predicted something mathematically and we all believe these things exist, but to actually see it is an uh, extremely visceral experience and uh, really what we need to maybe believe that this theory is actually real. Why do we want to image a black hole? Because, uh, because it's there, because we can image it and because we want to see it and because imaging a black hole offers us a very unique way of testing um, one of the least understood fundamental forces, which is the gravity. The Event Horizon Telescope collaboration is a collaboration of more than 200 scientists with different backgrounds. They all come from different parts of the world. They have different experiences, different set of skills. Um, these are engineers, uh, observers, theoreticians, and they all work together not only to image the event horizon of a black hole, but also to understand what we're seeing. I'm a theoretician. So I built uh, numerical simulations, simulation on a computer, models of a black hole on a computer uh, to understand the source. But I also take part in a data analysis. Uh, I also image uh, the data myself. I make images of black holes and I coordinate one of the working groups that has a very special focus on very special part of these observations, which is polarization. Data analysis, imaging black holes and doing simulations is very exciting. It's also very difficult and requires a lot of patience. It's a very long process, but seeing the final product is very satisfying. The most exciting part of this project is making images of black holes and actually to see the unseen. The long-term future of experiments like the Event Horizon Telescope is moving this kind of instrument into space and starting imaging black holes from space, which uh, improves a lot this kind of observation because it allows us to have even higher angular resolution than what we have now. So we will be able maybe in a 20 years, 30 years, make a very accurate images of the event horizon of a black hole. If you like Einstein's theory of gravity, then black holes are, you know, one of the most uh, interesting examples of this theory. And this is my, my role within the, this project. You know, I, I am a theorist, I work with you know, equations and uh, simulations, and um, my, my role is that to try and understand whether the, the image that we produce corresponds to the predictions of Einstein's theory or maybe to something else. When the project was suggested to me, I thought that uh, this was a perfect match because I had uh, skills that I could provide to this project and of course I was lacking those skills in terms of observations of, of, of uh, radio astronomy or of pulsar uh, observations, but they were already present in these other collaborators. So it was a, a, a fantastic way of combining talents from different people in a way that otherwise would have not been possible. In order to, to, to take this picture you need the cooperation, the simultaneous observations of many radio telescopes across the planet. You need to have the largest possible network of telescopes taking the same image at the same time. Not all of this light actually goes into the black hole, luckily, and that's why we can produce an image. And we have to compare the image that we simulate through computer programs with the image that we actually measure through observations. So what is most surprising of, 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 of this experience is that we managed to get a very good image the first time we tried to synchronize all of these telescopes at the same time. It is not so surprising that we obtained the image that we had predicted 
through simulations because while well, we believe our simulations are correct and because we believe that the theory of Einstein's general relativity is the correct one. We wanted to take an image of a black hole and the problem with black holes is that they are very small. So you want to take a very big black hole, which unfortunately is very far away from us. And so you need a big telescope. This telescope is 100 meters in diameter, but it's not enough. You want a bigger telescope, and of course it's impossible to build, but you can create a virtual telescope by joining different telescopes in different locations. And so you can build a telescope which is as big as the, R, the Earth. And in fact, that's exactly what we've done. We've, we joined telescope like this with telescope on the United States and in one even in the South Pole to get a very sharp image. An image that is comparable to seeing an orange on the moon. Black holes tell you that there are regions inside them that cannot be explored and for, for a physicist this is uh, very disturbing and attractive at the same time because you know we don't like to have doors which we cannot cross and in particular inside black holes physics is even expected to, to fail completely and so this even adds fascination to, to these objects. So this type of science requires large funding, or inevitably, because of the technology that is involved, the manpower that is needed. And this would not have been possible without the contribution of the European community that has allowed us, a European, to play at the same level as our colleagues in, the, in Asia and in, in the United States. So Un buco nero attrae materia che accresce su di essa e diventa calda ed emette luce, ma non tutta la luce entra nel buco nero, una parte viene emessa e raggiunge noi osservatori. E quello che facciamo noi è confrontare le immagini prodotte da simulazioni numeriche con codici con le immagini osservate. Quello che è stato sorprendente è che siamo riusciti a produrre questa immagine la prima volta che abbiamo coordinato tutti questi telescopi per fare questa immagine. Era la prima volta, non c'era stato un esercizio precedente e quindi avere l'immagine già molto buona e molto nitida al primo tentativo è stata una sorpresa. Il fatto che poi questa immagine uh, sia in accordo con le nostre predizioni forse è un po' meno in, in, in una sorpresa in quanto le nostre predizioni erano estremamente accurate e, e crediamo che la teoria di Einstein sia la teoria corretta per descrivere i buchi neri. Quello che volevamo fare è prendere, fare una foto di un buco nero. Ovviamente il problema con questo è che i buchi neri sono estremamente piccoli e quindi bisogna avere un buco nero che è estremamente grande. Ma questo è anche un buco nero che è molto lontano da noi e quindi c'è bisogno di un grosso telescopio per, per, per visualizzarlo. Un telescopio come questo, che ha un diametro di 100 metri, non è sufficiente. E bisogna avere qualcosa di molto più grande che ovviamente non si può costruire. Però si può creare un telescopio virtuale mettendo in sincronia questo telescopio con altri telescopi in altre parti del pianeta. Infatti si può costruire un, un telescopio che è così grande quanto il pianeta stesso. Ed è quello che abbiamo fatto mettendo in sincronia telescopi qui in Europa con altri telescopi negli Stati Uniti e uno addirittura al, al, al Polo Sud. E in questa maniera abbiamo ottenuto una un'immagine un estremamente uh, precisa ad alta risoluzione di quello che è un buco nero. And so from the very beginning this group was uh, instrumental, was a key player in the development of what is now known as the Event Horizon Telescope and we uh, used our experience, we used our scientific engagement, but we used in particular the technical contributions we could make to contribute to the construction of the EHT effort. Now what does that mean? We uh, developed, further developed and expanded our correlator capacity. Now we are one of the two uh, correlator centers for the EHT together with Haystack Observatory. But we also contributed to the continued back-end development with our DBBC3 project. And thirdly, we played a major role in the outfitting, the preparation of the ALMA array for the EHT observations. We um, helped making the phasing of the 64 ALMA antennas possible so that now ALMA taken as a whole is a major contribution to the EHT technical capability.